after several New York poets and writers that we heard, and also writers from Colombia, we now move to Czech Republic. Not the free Czech Republic of the last 30 years, but the Czech Republic of 1988, one year before the Iron Curtain fell. In 1948, thanks to Harry Truman and Winston Churchill, the Czech Republic was left to the Russians. In fact, the Americans retrieved just 10 kilometers before liberating Prague. The Russians until today call their invasion a liberating of Czechoslovakia from the Germans. And in fact, until this week, there are issues because uh, statues are being removed and the Russians are trying to uh, capture the, uh, the mayor of that part of town and, and uh, you know, horrible things, still trying to have the grasp grasp and grisp onto, che onto Czech Republic. Um, the, uh, many, many, many of us, like my parents with two little children, me and my sister, escaped in 1968. Others stayed and tried to fight the system as good as possible from the inside. Petr was one of them. Constantly watched and interrogated, numerous times jailed and beaten up, he and other of my friends found methods how to provoke the system and conducted a, a not so silent resistance. Petra wrote a very humorous book about it, but due to the lack of time here, and also especially given the situation that we're in in the United States at the moment, I have chosen to read mainly parts that relate to the methods of police today and back then in Czechoslovakia the uh, and the question of resistance. Petr, like many of my friends, has become an author as a consequence of life. Life put him to be born in Czechoslovakia during communism and gave him a consciousness that did not make it possible to accept the communist system, which consequently led him to almost daily encounters with the secret police. Many years later, when I was able to return to the Free Czech Republic after the Iron Curtain has fallen, I witnessed the trial of two of Petr's secret agents. Luckily, the new regime, the today's regime, did not grant amnesty to all as Václav Vahavel wanted to amnesty, have amnesty to everybody, luckily not to all, and his and Petr's agents were convicted for psychological and physical cruelty against Petr and many others. One agent later went crazy in prison, they say, and other, the other is still there. I picked several chapters for the translation and today's reading, which represent some minor scenes of how the secret agents treated anyone who was against the system, leave alone people like Petr who actively engaged against it. You may already see the parallel to what we discuss in the US today. Please be aware that I'm reading little parts of a book. So if there are some things that I try to make everything understand, but if there are some things you know, certain connections. It's not like a short story, obviously. So I hope I can explain all the, uh, all the connections. Anything you, Petr, něco chceš říct, než začnu číst? No, dík, thanks. Okay. <laughs> jo, anybody, aha, pardon, to je jiný, sorry. <laughs> all, all good. Anybody, anything before I start reading? Or shall we talk afterwards? Okay, so I start reading. Uh, I uh, translated the word secret agent as narc. Honestly, I don't know if it's correct, since English is not my first language, but uh, so if you hear narc, then that's the idea of like a mean secret agent, those, you know, those kind of people. So a little bit ahead. I, Petr that is, was born four years before the Russian invasion of Czechoslovakia just in time to store in my memory the August 68 images of the Russian tanks, the despair, and the adults' helplessness. The August 68 occupation of the country is my earliest, more coherent memory, followed by the funeral of Jan Palach, the student who in protest of the invasion took his own life, and the following so-called normalization time. 
From as early as preschool, we were conscious of where we live, that the country is occupied by the Russians and ruled by their collaborators, the homegrown communists. Gustav Husak, the uh, later president, uh, and at that time already, you know, I, 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 I uh, wrote you the explanation, to us was a local, was the local head demon. And we knew that above him stood the mere duke of hell, Lucifer Brevnev, whose blackened soul had leaked to the surface and misshaped his appearance. One of the most frightening experience of those early years was a TV broadcast from the airport where two monsters, Husak and Brevnev, hugged each other and kissed on the mouth. They literally glued to each other like some gigantic copulating leeches whose mouths are simultaneously excretory and multiplying organs. No wonder that the narcs, whom the demons lent their supernatural power to, became the central figure of our boy's world, back then there, he was still a boy, and that telling stories of our encountering with secret agents caused a shiver down our backs. We could rebel against our parents, be cheeky towards our teachers. All that was nothing compared to an encounter with a narc, which to us was the highest goal of an imaginable heroism equal to an adventure book where a boy encounters a huge predator. Just uh, to do something forbidden that fell under jurisdiction of an arc was a boyish test in the sense of how to learn to overcome oneself and a fear that tries to dominate a person and make his or her possibility to free decision difficult. So that's a little bit an introduction. And now one of, the, uh, one of the parts is called the arrested flag. The flyer which we used to call on people to protest against the Soviet occupation and Husak's normalization regime at Wenceslas Square on 21st of August, uh, especially at 19, 1988 at 6 p.m. asked the people to hang the Czechoslovakian flag out of their window. Several days before August 21st, I stayed away from my home address so that the narcs could not size me. In the morning before the protest, however, I did stop in. First, I scanned all the suspicious cars to see if anybody was inside them. When I saw the space was clear, I went to the apartment of the second floor, hung out the Czechoslovakian flag and immediately got out of sight. A girl who lived two floors up and who I previously had duplicate the flyer told me later that about 20 minutes later, police cars started driving up and down the street. And in another 10 minutes, three police, co police cars and two fire trucks joined in front of the building. The fireman unrolled the fire ladder. One of them climbed up his climbed his way up and cut off the, offenses, the offensive object, the Czechoslovakian flag. Back on the ground, the fireman handed it over to the police officer who crumbled it together and put it into his car where he stamped it under his feet and in this manner escorted the secured state symbol to the police station. The incident is included in the report of Prague's police chief, General Mayor Tsarda, for the operational staff of the day of August 21st, 1988. I, uh, uh, just to say, I explained in my, uh, I, I think everybody read it, I explained that uh, Petr is mirroring his experiences with what comes now, the, uh, the official notes that the, that the secret police made, that after the Iron Curtain had fallen, everybody could go and see their file, could see what the secret police had on them. Of course, these people had files, like my grandfather as well, that were gigantic. Mm -hmm. So uh, there it is written. Information about security situation in the territory of the police administration of the capital of Prague and central Czech, re Czech region of the time of 3 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the day of August 8, 1988. 
on the day of 8-21-88 at 10.03 a.m., the Operational Research Patrol sighted in the street of Chelchitskeho in Prague 3, in the window of the second floor, a partly exposed state flag. The examination detected that the inhabitants of the apartment, Janicek Josef and Platzak Petr, were not present. Therefore, the flag was removed with the help of a Prague fire, fire department car with a platform. Further investigation is being executed by the district of Prague 3. Petr writes, I am uncertain what Sarda meant by the word partly exposed. I hung the flag out the window thoroughly by their, by their two upper corners, by their two upper corners. Did he mean that it was not hung on a flag post? I obviously did not wait for the police. Uh, otherwise, it was a great performance of how one with minimal resources can in any police state cause a police maneuver and stir up a situation, a, a situation. In this case, with a three color piece of material, which I sized previously at the state anniversary from some building. Everyone on uh, Chelchitskeho Street was, was at their windows. The whole intervention of the uniform formation against the state flag was witnessed by dozens of people who happily com com communicated to their friends this absurd theater which the regime offered its citizens for free and unwillingly. Could there be anything more humiliating and dishonoring than that? An American living in, on the upper, upper floor of the building videotaped the whole act. In the evening, he also taped the protests in the center of Prague, but the police caught him and took the tape from him. Too bad, it could have been a unique take. I want to explain that this is 1988, so it's a, it's a year before the Iron Curtain came down, so the demonstrations already became more public, more people actually uh, participated, and of course, you know, and so on. Okay. Um, after the flag event, they harassed me for several months. On August 26, 88, I received a summons to Lupachov Street Police Department, signed off by Officer Rada for an official proceeding. I didn't go. It was repeated on September 12th and again September 28th. On October 3rd, I received a summons to, co to come to the Administration of Inner Affairs in Prague 1 to discuss the offense. I didn't go. On October 17th, 88, I received another appeal by the Administration of Inner Affairs of Prague 3. Finally, the Administration of in for Inner Affairs in Prague 3 decided over the matter without my presence. I appealed and on January 26, 1989, the Department of Inner Affairs of the National Committee for the Capital of Prague sent a verdict in which it confirmed the offense with the following justification. The contested decision indicts Petr Plaza guilty of disrupting public order according to article so-and-so, so-and-so, when in the morning hours he perpetrated by hanging the flag out the, the GSSR out of the apartment window as stated by the body of power and government. Given that August 21st, 88 is not a state holiday, nor a day determined by the body of, of power and government, Petr Platzak used the state flag unjustifiably, which is how he disrupted public order. Signed, Chief Commissioner Tomasz Littera. By the way, excuse me, I said 89. Of course, this was still 88. They gave me a ticket over 500 Czech crowns, which I didn't pay. Although the narcs of the Lubachev Street Police Department returned the flag to me, washed and ironed, 500 crowns still seemed way too expensive for that laundry service. The whole affair finally ended on March 19, 1990, after the fall of the Iron Curtain, when the Finance Department, due to the new government and the new GSR amnesty, dropped the execu execution of charges. Another chapter. 
uh, black magic or where did the bazoon vanish to? Bazoon was Petter's um, name that, that, the, that the secret service, you know, they gave people names, like not to, to, not, to, to, not to call them with their real name. So in his case, it was Bazoon. Of course, it's in some other part, it explains it. And also the last two lines I will be reading kind of, kind of explain it, but because I can't read the whole book, it, you know, it's not totally explained. So even long before the demonstration of the 28th of October, I had gone, I had gone underground and stayed underground. They searched everywhere for me, even at people's houses who I haven't seen for years. Someone always let me know that they had been mm -hmm. at someone's house and interrogated about me, including the grand auntie of an acquaintance, an elder lady who had never seen me and had no idea what was happening. For November 7th, 1988, I received a summons, summons to Bartyak. That was the short, that, that's, that's the short word uh, familiar for Bartolomeska Street Secret Service Station, where all of, all of those guys were numerous times imprisoned, beaten, and so on. Uh, so I received a summons to come to Bartyak that stated, come at once after obtaining this note. In the interference to, to column stood written, administrative meeting in your own interest. Signed so-and-so Beranek, who in reality, as I knew, was Captain Babitsky, who I, knew, who I already knew from many encounters. I didn't go. I didn't, however, hide in any way. In all normality, I moved around Prague I frequented bars and sometimes after carefully scanning the area, I stopped by at home. I only didn't spend the nights there. And also thanks to the secret service, I also didn't go to work because after the tiring many state police visits, once again, they had let me go. They kicked me out of work. They grabbed me by chance on November, 20, on, on November 7th in the evening at Klamovka Bar, exactly the day when I was supposed to come to the interrogation. I had stopped briefly in the bar to pick up some witnessing material about the police intervention of October 28th. When I left the bar, I saw the police car approaching. Somebody, the bar owner, apparently gave them a how. They, filled, they finally sized me down on Plzenska Street. The text I had picked up, I stuffed into my mouth and tried to swallow it. But one agent grabbed my hands from the back, the other held me by the neck, and the third stuffed my nose closed with his hand so that I had to, willingly or not, spit out the paper to not choke. They took me to Bartolomeska Secret Asian Station. There were two secret agents, the good old Captain Babitsky, alias Beranek, and another one acting under the name of Kettner. Immediately, I changed my behavior. I sat down, this is to show how they were playing, you know, how those people were playing with the secret agents also to not, you know, obviously they weren't, they weren't trying to be honest. Uh, I sat down quietly and almost smiled. I was asked to put on the table what was in my pockets. I denied. Kettner started to threaten me that they would use violence. I took out a pocket knife, a pocket watch, and, oops, where are you all? Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. a, a pocket watch and a handkerchief. I checked out Babitsky who I haven't seen for a long time, and smiled internally. I asked myself, what may he want? I hope he won't ask me about my job. During communism, it was a felony not to be employed. However, suspicious people could not get employment in their field or at their level of, of work. As soon as I thought it, Babitsky began, where do you work? That was the first question the agent posed and I had to laugh to myself. I didn't, he didn't look 
he didn't look like a complete idiot. Although sometimes in his action from the beginning, from the beginning, sorry, something in his actions from the beginning wasn't quite right. I could never figure out what he was trying to achieve. Perhaps he wasn't trying to achieve anything. One could say that in all those years that, were that they were after me for collaboration and at the same time, and at the same time kept going to see my employers so that they would kick me out, they not only created an alibi for alibi for me, but also protected me in a certain way from all kinds of other real catastrophes. Now, after all these years, he somehow looked tired, like if he had resigned on the police job. At that time, I had started to work as a cleaning person in the department store so-and-so, just so that my back was cleared and I could intervent who, who knows who knows what, since as usual, I didn't let them give me a stamp into my ID. So where do you work? That I won't tell you because you will go and get me kicked out again. I said with a serious face while smiling to, my, to myself. Look, said Baronic, there is a serious suspicion that you are trying to flake out of your work and we have to investigate that. So where do you work? Uh, I'll skip a little piece, then we go on. All right, I sighed as if I was giving up and lied. I work at the National Library. Immediately, I explained, however, that I worked in the depository and my job was to only look up books and therefore I didn't have contact with anybody. I added that it's not a good job, that it pays only 1,500 crowns and that I was looking for another job. Who is your boss? Mrs. Swobodova. I don't know if the agent bothered to, to go to the library in person to find out that there was no Platzak and there was no Mrs. Mrs. Swobodova to be seen or heard of, or if some minor agent got the task to investigate my job quitting, quitting there, and if, there, and if they were con content just looking by phone. Sorry, someone asked. Uh, insignificant, or if you know, they were wondering if I was, if it was an insignificant matter, as uh, the way I was uh, responding, or if I was actually a psychiatric case, or is he is he making fun of us in the end? Is there any willingness behind this? And if yes, what sort? They asked themselves. Now there is an intersection of a play by Petter, which I'm not going to read because we really would not understand it without the book. So I'm only ending with these lines. Uh, on the other hand, maybe Beranek didn't ask about my job anymore at all. After six years of trying hard to get me to collaborate with them, his hot trace disappeared in the belly of a <clears throat> former Jesuit college. The bazoon in reality was a cat so whoever of you has read um, Marketa and, uh, and uh, The Master, uh, you, you know what that's referring to, um, was a cat. That was the last time I saw Babitsky. They either called him off or locked him up in the madhouse. So I chose this part, which is a, you know, a certain rapport uh, it's not as much literature as, and so as much humor as the other part, but I explained that, you know, we all know what could happen here, anywhere, or, um, or such. So please, we have about, we have about uh, five minutes before we have to do what we have to do. So um, if anybody has a comment or question to Petra, uh, was it, yeah, Ian? So, I mean, I have to say one of the striking things about the count is that um, he's very courageous, very bold, and does not seem too worried about them. Like I was surprised when he talks about going out to the bars and being out on the street. He he's, doesn't seem 
uh, like the the secret police seem a little ineffective because I would imagine if they really wanted to, they could just find him and they could find a reason to hold on to him. But there seems to be almost like a bureaucratic back and forth where they have some power, but not that much. They actually have to prove something. Exactly. Petře říká, že se diví, že musí mohl chodit ještě po Praze, jako vypadá, že to bylo tak, že taková byrokracie, že prostě, ale přeci jenom asi museli mít nějaké jako důklady, že vás nemohli sebrat jen tak mírnix, dírnix. No, um, I, will be, I, will be, I, will be, I will speak Czech, jo. My, my English no is problem. very bad. No okay. uh, 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 No samozřejmě byl to jedno velký, velko, velko, byl to jedno velký vězení a, uh, was one big a stačilo, když měl člověk dlouhý vlasy, delší vlasy nebo, uh, nebo tričko s anglickým nápisem. It was bad enough if you had long hair like he does now or like, uh, like my favorite uh, Robert <laughs> with the hair or a, or a uh, t-shirt with something English, in English written on it. Tak byl neustále kontrolovaný policií. No. Then you were constantly controlled. A uh, právě jedna z takových uh, velkých šikan byl, uh, bylo ta, uh, že, že člověk musel mít razítko ze zaměstnání. And one of the things was that the, the way they, uh, they tried to bother you was you had to have a stamp in your ID from work. So you had to be employed. Uh, a, a když... and, but at the same time, they, as I was reading, they, they, as, as Pedro writes, they were trying to everything to, to get you uh, to lose the job. Hmm? Ano? No, a když on neměl, tak ho mohli sebrat kdy, kdykoliv na ulici. Yeah, and if, aha, so if you didn't have the stamp, then they could grab you wherever they wanted on the street. No, a potíž byla v tom, že člověk měl zaměstnání a přišla, přišla tam tajná policie a z toho zaměstnání člověka vyhodili. Takže začal, začal vlastně závod s časem, protože do šesti neděl si musel najít nový zaměstnání yeah. a často nechtěli nikde vzít. Yeah, so within six weeks you, you, had to, you had to find another job and very often they wouldn't want to take you because of course they collaborate, or didn't collaborate, but they lived within the system. Mm. Mm -hmm. No, ano. Já jsem to teda dělal, dělal tak, že když jsem byl zrovna v jednom zaměstnání a měl jsem v, v průkazu to razítko, tak jsem nahlásil, že jsem tu občanku ztratil. Well, I guess another thing that would strike me is because there were some people in collaborating or everybody's kind of taking care of their own skin, I imagine there were huge problems with just trust and who to trust and this type of thing that must have been very uh, just mentally challenging to live with day after day. Že fakt, že se nedalo asi důvěřovat nikomu, že to muselo být psychologicky velmi, velmi nátěžný, náročný. Psychologicky to bylo samozřejmě, no byla, byla to magořina prostě od, od začátku, ale člověk se netajil se svýma názorama. Jo? Já jsem si vždycky říkal, co co jsem si myslel, tak to jsem prostě říkal normálně. Co se nesmělo říkat, tak byly věci technického rázu, kde, kde se vyrábí nějaký samizdat, nebo prostě kde, kde je nějaká tajná tiskárna. Tak. Momentík. So, of course, it was completely craziness from the very beginning, but we, people like him, uh, we, you know, always said what we, what we thought. Uh, besides, of course, where we are, uh, where we are making the flyers, where we're duplicating the flyers, and and those kind of things. And in later years, they already also had connection with the West. So you know, especially Václav Havel, who later became president, and uh, the this, uh, you know all the dissidents who uh, who signed the Carta 77, which was the first open protest paper. Uh, for people to sign, and anybody who signed that, like automatically, was of course on the list. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Were you ever in, in prison? Yes, I was in prison. I was in prison, but only in a ta starší generace to odnesla za nás. Jako, je zavírali za to, za co, za co nás už nezavírali. Yeah, so he was in prison uh, briefly. I have to say, other friends of mine were in prison at home all the time. Uh, but he, but Petr says that um, that uh, the older generation, uh, 
you know, like Václav Havel, Havel's generation, they were in prison all, all the time. Uh, they really, you know, had the hard years, the, the hard, the, the tough, the tough time. Za, za to nás teda víc fyzicky napadali. But, they, but uh, in, on the other hand, with the young generation, they were more physical. And uh, as I said, the trial that I witnessed um, uh, a few years ago in Prague uh, was because uh, those, those kind of, uh, you know, they had, they had their own secret agents. They already, you know, people like Petr, they had names for them too, because of course they were around all the time. They knew them. They're like standing down by the tree. They're, you know, they're everywhere. Sometimes they even almost drank a beer together. Okay. Not to exaggerate, but almost. That's how well over the years they, it was almost like a relationship. Mm. And so, however, two of those took him out of Prague in the forest and beat him up badly and let him walk back and told him that in two hours he has to be at the police station, which was physically impossible. And uh, so those guys, that was the trial that I witnessed, who then, you know, during the Free Czech Republic already, they were, they were, um, uh, they were sentenced. However, Václav Havel basically did an amnesty for everybody, which a lot of the young people like Petr were not, not for. They really wanted justice. And this is also important today. But um, so the amnesty on the one hand is a problem because there are still communists around now in the government, right? But on the other hand, I mean, you cannot hang everybody at, from, a, from a pole or, or, you know, that's how Václav Havel was like a Gandhi. He was a peace person. That's how he wanted it. Anybody? So what, what does justice mean? Hello? Yes, we hear, we hear you. Uh, yeah, sorry, I just went, the screen went away, sorry. Um, no, I, I, I really, sorry, someone's calling, um, sorry about this. My, my um, admiration and all my respect for what you went through, I mean, it just sounds horrifying. And that you maintain this humor, I love this, you know, and it's such a defiance and, you know, like the best part of, I think, our humanity is that we could share through some of these winks and nods that you give us, you know, as readers. So thank you for it. It was amazing to experience through your eyes and your sensibility. Um, my question is to Gabriella's can I, point. Can I, just, can I just say that? Hold it. Can I just tell him of real course, quick? Of course, of course. Takže ti opravdu děkuje a že samozřejmě mnoha respektu a tak dále a že... Jo, tak dorozuměj si trošku. Jo? Co to říká? Petře. Jo, jo. And uh, yeah. let me let me uh, let me just let me just tell, uh, answer real quick. There is uh, first of all, I wish in the United States we would th take things with more humor because, like in Guatemala or here, that's the that's the only weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, here, I mean, in back in Czech Czechoslovakia. Um, and the other thing is, there is a tradition of to deal with humor because in the Habsburg time, the Czech soldiers were part of the Habsburg Empire, and maybe you have heard of the uh, Nobel Prize winning. Uh, novel, The Good Soldier Schweik, The Good Soldier Schweik, which is a Czech soldier who notoriously played the dumb, the dumb one. He played the idiot under the Habsburg regime. It's in English, and there's a lot in English if you're interested, and uh, the, the Good Soldier Schweik is a tradition how to deal with, with this humor. Yes, David? Oh, so just to bring it to today, 2020, um, to Gabriella's point about this generation not seeing the justice served because there's still communists involved and whatever, they're trying to just be more peaceful. Um, my question, if you don't mind like responding, um, and you don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm just curious what your sense of justice would look like in, you know, an ideal world, you know, if, if there were no parameters inhibiting it, like, you know, what, what, and of course, um, you know, like, please don't feel any pressure to answer this, but I'm just curious, intellectually anyway, or emotionally, yes. you know, what, and, and the part B, so that's like your version of justice for what you had to bear witness and be tortured, you know, like, how would you respond if you were the judiciary, okay? And then part B is, in light of what's happening around the world to police brutality 
against black bodies especially, but to anyone of some constituency yeah. that is easily, you know, like more precarious, that doesn't have powers of the That's state. It. That's it. What would yeah. you, the, yeah, so like what would you, like, you know, to tie it into to the global yeah. movement against yeah. brutality. David, David sedí v Los Angeles a dole, dole na ulici mu prostě rozbije, že jo, jsou ty protesty a rozbíjejí mu dveře a já nevím, co všecko, prostě je, je v prostředku toho a navíc tři měsíce už nevyšel z domu kvůli koroně. To znamená, že oni opravdu jako v té aktuální americké situaci těch protestů. A on se tě ptá jednak, eh, jak ty bys viděl, že by mě, eh, jak, jako ty jsi smyslel, že jestli by mě, měla být amnestie vůči těm lidem, nebo jestli, je, jak, ty, jak ty bys je býval, jestli ty bys je býval potrestal. No a druhá otázka právě k těm protestům v Americe, jak vidíš situaci takovouhle celkově? A dej si trošku dolů tohle to, protože ti vidíme jenom br- čelo. Tak. Já, děkuju. <laughs> Hele, e, 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 mm. No, mně se podařilo dostat tři estebáky za mříže po listopadu 89, který mě právě jednou unesli a zmátili. I managed, a... that, that's what I was talking about earlier, that I witnessed. I managed, I, meaning Petr, managed to, uh, to get three secret agents behind bars. Trvalo to sice 25 let, ale, years. ale dostal jsem je. No a já si myslím, že prostě bez odpovědnosti za to, co člověk dělá, prostě nemůže společnost fungovat. Takže... Yeah, a, a society, I think, cannot function without the responsibility for one's acts, for the society's act, actions. No, bez odpovědnosti nemůže existovat svoboda, takže já jsem byl There vždycky... is no freedom without responsibility za to ty lidi potrestat, za to prostě, nebo aby, aby nesli odpovědnost za to, co dělali. Yes, so a, a klidně, klidně i po 50, even after 50 years. letech, stejně jako do dneška stíhají nacistický zločince v Německu. Like today still the, the Nazis are being persecuted. Mm-hmm. And, no, and, huh? A co se, co se týče Ameriky, tak samozřejmě tam to je to je podle mě úplně jiná situace, moc strašně složitá, do které se neodváží moc, moc nějak to komentovat z České republiky. My jsme nikdy nic takového podobného nezažili, nějaký takovýhle rasový nepokoje nebo na základě prostě nějakých to. Takže to těžko říct. No, ta, ta, ta situace samozřejmě tam je jiná v Americe, ale nicméně ta, ten ten, ten zážitek může být podobný, jak, jaký jsme asi měli my, třeba když nás policajti prostě někde mlátili a tak. No. To, to, to asi ten, ten zážitek je asi stejný. No. Yeah, the, the racial situation, like it is in America, I cannot really comment on, because we never experienced anything like that. But, uh, but um, the... Um, Uh, Sonia, Sonia, I see that you wrote me a long chat. I cannot, right now, I cannot read it, okay? It's okay. It's okay. If you want, say it. Say it in, in one second, you'll just say it, okay? One minute. Um, yeah, so we never, we never witnessed that, but I can imagine that you go through exactly the same thing that we were going through uh, back then. Sonia? Well, I was, I was just going to say about your translation, uh, since I'm an editor, uh, NARC, means specifically a narcotics agent, someone who's mm. investigating drug crimes, which is not yeah. what oh, not at all. Yeah. At, not at all. So how, how would you? Well, if they are looking specifically at, quote, political crimes, yes. so call them political police. Yeah, OK. So secret agents, political police. OK, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Yeah. Or, or, you know, oftentimes, like in the case of East Germany, they would refer to the political police by their name, the Stasi. So yeah, once it's that once was the German, the Germans were the Stasi. So right, I would but, have to say the Czech Stasi. Yeah, I mean, well, did the Czech have a name for their secret police? Were yeah, they, they do. It's STB, but it, you know, STB. Ah, yeah. In English, they call it clandestine unit. What do they call it? Clandestine unit. In NYPD, New York Police Department has a clandestine unit. Clandestine unit. Uh huh. There you go. That's okay. How it's Thank you very much. By the way, we haven't met yet. Hello. I, 
Indira is my friend. Hi, my name is Indira and I'm from former Yugoslavia. Zdravo. And, and... Zdravo. <laughs> Zdravo. Tako ste. <laughs> Tako si. Be, be, dobre, dobre. Hvala. Dobro sam. <laughs> my question is really whether, um, because those tactics that you're talking about, they are awfully similar to the one that they clandestine unit, right, in, uh, or, uh, you know, UDBA, that was in Yugoslavia, was UDBA, had. And some files were relieved, revealed, but some files were not re revealed. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it depends in which part of the country. Mm -hmm. And in Yugoslavia, we still have, although it's now totally broken, in th there is this, this, um, so-called the Matichni Broj, which is the same in all parts of former republics, mm. still to this day. Mm. So if I had a, if I have, it's like identification card that was issued in one part of the country now, I mean, 25 years, 35 years ago, I will still have the same number in the other totally different state. And some people who are researching these tactics, they really talk that these kinds of forces, not much have changed, but that's a totally different conversation. What I really wanted to ask uh, Peter is, is there any knowledge that, that the secret police agencies were collaborating across the board about the tactics that they were using? Mm -hmm. Because Udba would simply drive people nuts. They will get into one's home, they will change the shoes, and then they will send them to the, you know. Um, Which town are you from? Which town are you from? I'm from Montenegro. Oh, okay. I okay. lived in Belgrade and worked as a journalist before I started humanitarian work. Oh my God, my, you and I have a lot to talk about, but I was, my, I was there during the war. Was the one, my former husband was the one who was subjected more directly and I know more from his experience and experience yeah. of the other. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. the country when the country was um, sort of in tomorrow. So I still haven't seen anything of my file. Right. I know it's there, but I don't. Yeah. Yeah. But he it, has. It, it, so it, it's it, it, the collaboration and the tactics that they use. Right. For instance, Udba used a very similar tactic. Um, my former husband knew the guy who was following him. He's still in police, in Croatian police. Uh, Udba has been dissolved a long time ago. So, I mean, to that point, there exactly. was no amnesty. That's, that's the point that these people are still there. Takže rozuměl si trošku Petře, že teda jako třeba ten člověk, který jí uh, uh, se vyptává, uh, jo, jako její fízl, její fízl mm. že je tam stále v policii dneska například. Ale co se hlavně ptala, rozuměl si asi, že je z Montenegra a že teda říkala, že něk, některý lidi ty, um, jak se říká, ty zápisky, zápisky mají, druhý do nich vidět nemohli. Ale hlavně se ptá, jestli je evidence, že teda ty, ta, ty fízlové pracovali třeba s Jugoslávií, s Polskem a tak dále. No, je samozřejmě, tam nevím teda, jak, jak to bylo s Jugoslávií, Slaví, ale s, s, s NDR velmi úzce spolupracovali se Štázy a samozřejmě s KGB sovětskou. Yeah. So, ro rozumíš, but for everybody else yeah. in English, so, yeah. so Petr knows, of course, with KGB and the German Stasi, the East German Stasi, they certainly worked very close together with Yugoslavia, he doesn't know. Right, right. But and of then course, the, for sure. The other, the other part of the question is that very recently there was a BBC report on and the interviews done with these famous rock musicians who would write, who would, who were performing in late eighties. And apparently, one of these very famous songs was written by people from the State Department. Uh, I mean, state, whatever. CIA, whoever they call it. So the journalists, I, I'm going to send you, Gabriela, and, and everybody else. Ed Bulliami, who is a journalist who did a lot of investigative reporting during the war in, in Bosnia, he uh, wrote a piece on that in, in Guardian in early May. But there was also this sort of, not only that there was collaboration 
in Yugoslavia, of course, people still debate whether CIA, all of these, you know, theories was involved in a dissolving of the country through UDBA, through DB. But what they say uh, with, in, in this reporting, and the BBC journalists went and did interviews with uh, rock musicians who were extremely famous. There is a specific song, and there is a podcast about that. Um, I mean, and and I, I am going to sh share information with you maybe later. So you will see that they say that the collaboration between these agencies was much bigger than we could really imagine. Mm -hmm. And that they would even write and use musicians in former Yugoslavia as jazz musicians, for instance. Yeah. They, would, they would send for the cultural exchange and then they would always visit the embassies. Oh, sure. I mean, look at, we know today that MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art, was heavily influenced by the CIA and that we would not have any abstract expressionism in the United States without the CIA trying to dominate the culture in, uh, in the world, right? So that is a known fact, by the way, today. So, so of course, yeah. Thank you, though. Mm, very nice to meet you. Yeah. So we, we have lots of time. So uh, since with our little typical check, check way to go around uh, the Zoom system. <laughs> and um, yeah, Petr, um, I have, of course, uh, read uh, your whole book and we're actually talking about translating it into German and so on. Uh, but... Um, yeah, the uh, oh yeah. after that trial, you know, talking about the schweig and the funniness, the, the humor of it, after that trial that I witnessed uh, a few years ago where the three of them got convicted, uh, we, after that, we went to the, to the bar across the street because the, you know, the, in Czech Republic, uh, some people have offices, but usually you make, you do everything else in the bars, including business and so on, you know, the very active bar life, politics, business, culture, everything, and cafes and, uh, and bars at night. And um, so we sat there at one table and at the other table sat the other party with those agents. Říkám, že potom tenkrát jako po tý, jak se říká, jo, že jsme šli naproti do hospody, potom co, co jako, jak se říká, uh, trial. Um, no, no, check. So, so. So, so, potom soudě, ano, potom soudě, jak jsme pak seděli v hospodě málem všichni prohromadě. U jednoho stolu my a u druhého stolu my. So the absurdity, you know, this is where Václav Havel, Václav Havel's absurd theater comes from and all this absurdity of, of things is still very much a part of the Czech culture and when Czech people speak, and Petr's book is a lot like that, not in that part so much that I read, but in other parts, it is not, you cannot take for granted what you read because there is some other underlining uh, under it or behind behind what he's saying or writing. Tam, jak jsme mluvili o, o té psychické náročnosti toho režimu, tak nejhorší na tom bylo, že, 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 ten, že, že ty lidi ten režim neustále lhal od rána do večera a lhal prostě i ve věcech, které vlastně lhát nemusel. Jo. Yeah, so the worst thing was about the psychological pressure that the, that the regime constantly lied to people, even in things that they didn't have to lie to. So it sounds very familiar these days in America, doesn't it? That you don't know what's true. I mean, we still know what's true and what's not, but some people don't know what's true and what's not. And there after, you know, if you have 40 years of that, how are you going little by little? How can you stay aware of what's true and what's not? Yeah, Slavo Zizek writes a lot about that, that you have to invert what's being told to you and be like counter intuitive almost and in a post truth world and i think we've been living in that world all of us now for the longest time i mean that's why fiction reads more truthfully than non-fiction because we've all become so um guarded by the manipulations of what passes as truth you know i mean it's weird because orwell wrote about the ministry of propaganda 
in an ironic way, but if you look at figures like Kellyanne Conway or the new press secretary of the White House in this administration, of the name I won't say, of the yeah. president, um, you know, it's just literal. It's not a metaphor anymore. Yeah. No, říká, že samozřejmě, co George Orwell psal o propagandě a co známe od nacistů, tak to dneska se tady v Americe děje. A no, už to není fikce, že jo? Nebo je to totální fikce právě. Hmm. Jsme se, my jsme se právě proti tomu bránili, že, že, že jsme schválně všechno, co říkali komunisti, tak jsme převraceli vzhůru nohama. Yeah. A, a, ale už jako na, na škole. That's why, whatever we, that's why, as he's saying in what I read, uh, whatever they said, we automatically uh, turned the other way around. <laughs> a, a to včetně toho, že když komunisti hlásili, že je země kulatá, tak my jsme hlásili, že je placatá. Jo. Including that if the communists said that the world is round, we definitely said that it's not. <laughs> no, this is what Slavo is he's that right, you know, before he kind of went off the rails. You know, like a few years ago when he was more, I think there was more clarity. This is exactly, he, his whole, everything is based on this idea. Yes. Sonia? Bono? Já mi jenom ještě můžu dodat, ono, ono na první pohled to vypadá jako taková srandička laciná, ale ono to strašně osvobozovalo takovýhle. You know, from outside or in the first view, it looks like uh, some little fun or something, but it was very liberating. It was really the only way how to deal with it even. Think differently and say things differently than the, the constant pounding of the system uh, was the only way. Sonia? Yeah, I, I was just going to say this question of simply inverting what the official what the officials say and saying, oh, well, that the opposite is because that may not also, that may not be true either. And I know from my own experience, I grew up as a red diaper baby. So my parents- What is were, that? Okay, a red oh, diaper yes. baby <laughs> is someone whose parents or, and or grandparents were members of the Communist Party in the US. So my grandfather was a Communist Party member uh, May I just explain it real quick? Sure, sure. Sorry for the interruption, but that's how, how I have to do it. Takže uh, ona je z generace červených plenek, baby červený plenky. Mm -hmm. Ty tomu rozumíš okamžitě, asi, že prostě její rodiče byli řečeni, že jsou komunisti v, tady. No, yeah, okay. The okay, so, so I grew up in the 50s and everything was very anti-communist and my parents said, you know, just because you see it on TV doesn't mean it's true. So in my mind, I thought, okay, whatever they say, the opposite is true. So they were saying the communists are bad and evil. Therefore, I thought, well, the communists must be good. Now, once I grew up and learned a bit more about what was going on, I knew that wasn't true either. So the, the, the inversion can you know, work as a maybe first step, but then yeah. you still have to, it, you still have to go further to find critical what's, what's true. Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, some people from, some Czech people who live in the United States still think that way. And for instance, vote for Trump because they would never vote anybody who's on the left. Yes. Yeah. No, no, jo. Ano, ano. A právě říkám, že bohužel takhle, ale to taky funguje, že mnoha Čechů a dokonce Češi, který bydlej tady v Americe, um, co říkají, um, elektujou. Um, volej. Volej, volej. Volej. Volej Trumpa, protože v životě by ne, ne, nevolili nikoho na, 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 lev, na, lev, na levici. Na levo. No. No, Teď většího volá, prostě představ si to. No, opravdu. So... Uh, yeah, so in, in any inversion or, or any extreme, right, in your head is, um, is a problem. Uh, Jack, you wanted to say something? No, I was saying just that before. I, I think there's a problem with media. There's always been propaganda, like, I mean, in all governments that do it, what, what's printed, what's not printed. It's the need. And, and what I think it kind of brings around is like, okay, so where do you go for correct information? I think that's part of the issue that we have today. Yourself. 
And it's the same thing that you can't go one or the opposite. We need like critical thinking skills and we need a media where we can trust, which is not, let's say the older media, which objective, but still have a fixed viewpoint. But we need a media that we can go that has diverse opinions. Yeah. And that we can trust because if someone says if you can't, yeah. we need to have some trust. And that's part of a disempowerment when you don't trust your media sources or your news sources. Ano, ano. Tohle je taky strašně chytré, že to zajímavý člověk s tím by bylo fajn posedět v hospodě, Petře. Mm. Uh, 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 a říká, že no jo, tak ale jako, že jo, tak uh, kde je aspoň trošku pravdy a že prostě potřebujeme média, který nemají fixovanou fixovanou tu a jsou jako... Um, do you have that in Canada? I think it's, it's, it's all over. Yeah, I mean, over here, depending where it is, like in Quebec, you know, we have... Um, uh there's the french english split and then you have the um i mean definitely in terms of the indigenous i mean definitely i mean you don't really hear about uh, the indigenous issues we have here we had slavery in canada it's now that's coming coming through um you have indiani toto stále ještě problém a stále se malo o tom mluví v kanadě you had re- you have recently you have a split like almost um i guess the the idea would be we had a conservative party like canada's i think canada would be considered as what you would say that that red we're going towards uh, socialism falling into communism so people go conservatives but we had a conservative party that was probably close to center we had a liberal party that's left of center um but the conservative party fell apart and became really, really far right. And there were certain things that were happening. So people distrusted uh, some of the media sources. So the right distrust, uh, d- d- didn't trust these newspapers. The left did not trust these newspapers. So again, it's like, where do you go for your information? Yeah, yes. I'm a bit of minute. We have 10 more minutes. Rich, please. Oh, I, I would just, um, you know, I was raised uh, during the McCarthy hearings. When I was like 10 years old, I was transfixed to the TV every every single day. Takže Rich taky vyrostl z 50. let uh, v McCarthy době a koukal na ty, koukal na ty, uh, jak se říká, uh, prostě v televizi dávali ty, že jo, jak, ty komunisty. Uh, uh, Ony na červenice. Ano, yeah. ano, ano, přesně. Okay. Uh, Petr calls it the, uh, the run for the witches, what they did here. Uh, right. And, but uh, I, I, thought, I think even at 10 years old, you could make judgments on the basis by what you were seeing on a daily basis. Ale dokonce yeah. jako desetiletý člověk ví, co se děje. Yeah. But, but beyond that, the only other judgments you could make were from 6.30 to 7 every night or 6 to 6.30. You were either watching Walter Cronkite or you're watching Hunley and Brinkley or you're watching whoever was on ABC and you made a judgment of the news on the basis of the trust you had in those individuals. And you usually followed only one of them. So you had a half a, an hour of news every day to make a decision on what was happening in the world. Were they critical of McCarthy openly? Uh, I, not an, not initially, uh, you know, but as time went on, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But but I think it, you know, what what where the critic, the critics were really in the room, you know, it was it was the people, uh, you know, who were on the other side of it yeah, that really became the critics, and 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 because so many were were from Hollywood and well respected by. Yeah. People like kids, Mike says, self, you know, here's my one of my my hit was a Gene Autry or somebody's there, you know, being claimed to be a communist. Only, only speak slow. Uh, yeah, I, I was to say that I I felt like they, they were they were going after my heroes. Yeah, takže you know? k tomu, že například někteří, kteří obžalovali komunismem, byli z Hollywoodu, tak on jako mladý uh, to viděl, že jako chtějí zavřít jeho jeho Heroi, jak se říká, jeho hrdiny. Hmm? Hmm. No a navíc stejně, jak teda tyhle ty, tyhle ty uh, soudy byly, byly v, v televizi celý, tak samozřejmě člověk viděl taky tu druhou stranu, protože to taky bylo v televizi. Ty, který jako se, se um, jak se říká, rechtfertigen, se obhájeli, obhajovali, takže si sám opravdu mohl udělat uh, hmm. obrázek. Yes, yes. So, so, just... 
just to go one more point, you know, Edward R. Murrow used to have his day, a weekly show. And uh, my God, I think the ratings must have been over the, you know, over the top. And we believed him in anything he did and said, I think, as a country. But he also had a very good guests uh, that, that he brought out who really conveyed the news pretty well as well. Yes. Rich, I was, because I I, that's what I was thinking about, you know, particularly when, you know, you used to be able to trust Walter Cronkite or there were these figures that you would have and you would say, oh, these guys are good. But did you ever see the American ruling class by Louis Lapham, the, the film? Because... No. Že nějaký film, který se jmenuje The American Ruling Class. Od koho? Uh, by, by who? Louis Lapham. Louis And he does, so he, he, he's a writer who, who comes from the upper class, but he, he asked, is there such a thing as, as an American ruling class? And Walter Cronkite comes on. He does, a, he does like a, he walks in and he walks out. And Barbara, Barbara Ehrenbach, I believe, the, the writer, she also does a walk on. So she's part of that film. So it's the whole thing, whether there is an American ruling class, it's kind of the, 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 the splits between the myths. So exactly like what you were saying, like Walter Cronkite, you know, we believe Walter Cronkite and that faith in, in reporters like that in getting your news has deteriorated, it's eroded. To, to these days. You know, I, I have one more question of, of Peter. Uh, I think the earliest date that was mentioned was 1968, uh, right? Yes. And you were just 14 years old, but we were having, you know, our worst year as a, as a country in 1968. Did any of that news uh, in those days reach out to your country of what was happening in America? Absolutely, Rich se ptá, jestli v, v Čechách se vědělo, co se dělo tady v, v 68. Že jo, prostě děti květ, květin a tak dále. Jasně, jo, jo. A, a právě hypí v té v, v době uvolnění před sovětskou okupací, tak v, 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 odkaz hypí byl strašně silný v Čechách. A ovlivnilo to vůbec rockovou muziku a undergroundový hnutí. The uh, rock music and the hippie movement uh, feeded the underground uh, movement in, uh, in uh, Czechoslovakia. Mm. And it was just like just before the Russians really closed the borders. So really that, you know, yeah, it, it fed a lot the people. Yes, but yes. after that, uh, the Russians really like locked down completely. My jsme vlastně nebyli klasická opozice, my jsme byli vlastně, jsme si chtěli dělat jenom vlastní kulturu. We were a... not a real opposition, we just wanted to do our own culture, not politics. Ale ten paranoidní režim na nás zautočil a začal nás kriminalizovat a pronásledovat, že? Uh, you know, with the hippie time, sort of with the hippie and rock and roll, but then uh, the uh, paranoid uh, regime started to incarcerate us, uh, sorry, to lock us up, so then we became political. Mm -hmm. Že uh, ten underground se potom spojil s tou politickou opozicí kolem Václava Havla. Then the underground uh, uh, joined the Václav Havel uh, dissident uh, uh, political sphere Interesting. and worked, worked with them. That's what's mm -hmm. so dangerous today. I mean, you know, I'm just mostly afraid that uh, in the end, Trump is going to be right with bringing in the army because people are going to go so far, which is not even needed because laws are being changed. and rules are being changed and if they overdo it then in the end he'll be right to bring in to bring in the army which would be terrible that you know in the end people will think he'll be right ian yeah i think in in somewhat related to that i have a question for peter about um because i do feel like in some ways the administ trump administration is just sitting back and letting stuff go to hell more and more it benefits them but yeah. i'm very interested in um this term hyper normalization because I think it can apply now. So I would just like to ask uh, Peter, um, what were some of the characteristics of hyper normalization as he experienced it, that program? Yeah, že co byly ty charakteristiky, jak jsi, jak, který ty jsi teda zažil, eh, normalizace. Nebo jak on říká, hyper normalizace. Jasně. 
No tak to je celkově zglejšaltovaná společnost, srovnaná do roviny. Putting the, uh, the society on one level, everybody is the same. Hmm. Prostě média, kult, kultura a včetně i třeba zahrádkářských spolků, nešlo jenom o politiku, ale prostě kompletně celá společnost byla... Byla prostě srovnaná do, do, do jedné roviny. No, nik, nikdo nesměl prostě mít jiný názor, nosit prostě jiné věci a, a ne, než kvůli mít jiný myšlenky. A to samozřejmě, to samozřejmě může fungovat jenom tehdy, když na to lidi přistoupí. Stejně jako vojnu nedělají lampasáci, ale mazáci. Jo. And, uh, to jsou lampasáci. Ne, nevím, to by potom vysvětlí. Důstojníci, důstojníci. Ale že, 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 ty vojáci, že ty vojáci se hlídají samé navzájem. Jo, Takže jo, 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 jo. Aha. And it's sort of like, uh, it of course only works, if the people buy into that. Uh, it's almost like in the army where the soldiers, uh, the soldiers guard each other. Yeah. They buy into the, that system and they guard each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, uh, you know, my mother, of course, my parents lived through the 50s. That's why then they escaped in 68. And uh, yeah, you, it was, you know, my mom, she first was a... Uh, a manager of a hotel, but only because she was so good that they could not spare her because initially she wasn't even allowed to study, of course. None of these people, you know, my, my, my grandfather was an aristocrat besides other like things that he helped the system. So he was absolutely not allowed, to, she was absolutely not allowed to study. But she, anyway, she, she became a hotel manager and they had to, they had to accept her because she was I see you get the hang of the rules. That's <laughs> that. I have I have so many problems with my connection at home. It's constantly cutting off. So no, no, this is not it. I only no, I know. Have I know. a half hour. That's why. Yes, yes, I understand. Half hour. Yeah. Yeah. So. So you were saying, Gabriela, that I it it cut off as you were talking about. Um, your mom being yeah, able that to she her. then later when she was a teacher for ho for hotel managers, she you know she was guarded what to say and what not to say, what to teach them, and and she was told what not to say. Wow. Uh, Which of course my mother went around as well, but then one day she left. What about now, um, Pedro? Is it like how how do you? What's your perception of now? there culturally socially yeah jak se koukáš na Čechy dneska že ještě pardon že jak se kouká je je jak se koukáš na Čechy dneska jako jak je to dneska no tak samozřejmě za za bolševika to vypadalo hrozivě dneska to, to mnohdy vypadá taky hrozivě, zvláště prostě, když, když 50 český prezident, což je takový zdejší Trump, možná ještě o něco horší, yeah. tak má furt podporu 50% lidí, což je mi naprosto nepochopitelný, protože on lidma pohrdá, pohrdá tady tou zemí a, a přes toho lidi volej jenom kvůli tomu, že dělá silný řeči. Yeah. So of course they can travel and be free and this and that, but they also have a Trump, you know, and he, and Petr can't believe that 50% of the per, of the people are, uh, are supporting this goofball, although he's making fun of people or especially because of, because of that. 
So, možná jim trošku vysvětli, jako jak to k tomu došlo. Víš, Klaus, Klaus doba, nebo tak nějak trochu, jako jak vůbec, jak to, že, jak to, že to nešlo jiným směrem. Proč to nešlo lepším směrem? No, v, po, po, po takové té havlovské disidentské vládě, která mimo jiný se opírala prostě o lidský práv v zahraniční police, politice a tak dále, to převzali takzvaný pragmatici. Then the pragmatists came in. Ano? Ale eh, no, pra, pra, pragmatismus, který ovšem je navíc ještě eh, cinknutý nebo falešný, protože tam zatím jsou prostě různý zájmy, eh, že to není, eh, že to není eh, čistý obchod, ale špinavý obchod. Yeah, yeah, and of course it was not clean business, but uh, everything but that, with a lot of different interests in the background. No, jsou, jsou tam prostě různé vazby na, na, na Rusko a na, na dneska, dneska, dneska k Číně. With Russia today, with China and Russia and so forth. I mean, you must imagine the Czech Republic is in the middle of Europe. So, yes, there is Europe, there is Western Europe and the European Union and they feed a lot on that, but not everything is ideal there either. So they, they have this long relationship bad or good with uh, with Russia they are in between those big forces this little country in the, those between those big forces so they really somehow you know level it constantly within their little body ty, ty, ty lidi nehájejí český národní zájmy ale za, zájmy e, e, skupin které je do, dostali na hrad a zaplatili jim to Yeah, 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 a který yeah. jsou spojený s business businessově s Čínou a, a yeah. So unfortunately, the politicians today uh, do not have the interests of the people, but the, their interests that got him to into politics and and you know the interests that are tied to China and so on. I mean, it sounds I, so similar to yeah. the U.S. It sounds like literally parallel to what mm. we are experiencing. Yeah. This is why we are having better today. Yeah. Well, thank you both for yes. putting this together. It was. I, I think we need to invite Petro again. You know, there's more, I think. Oh yeah, let's absolutely. Že tě zase musíme pozvat, že je tady tolik ještě o čem, o čem co mluvit. <laughs> Dobře. Very true. Thank you. Thank you moc krát. Thank you very Thank much, Petro. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. David and Ian, who are, who are here. Thank you. Very Thank happy. Thank you, Gabriela, for putting this together. And, and uh, yeah. yeah, I look forward to next week. Tell me again, David, you are next week? You said the 24th? Is that, that is next week, right? That's yeah. right. I don't know. I still am like, like my days, my time. I'm, I'm just, yeah. But if you send me the link, oh, would you like, uh, I have the unlimited Zoom. Would you like me to set up the link or whatever you want? You could tell me later. Uh, no, I think it's kind of fun this way. It's a ch it's But a ch you know, there's a way you can co-host in advanced features with the page. I'll show you. I figured okay. it out. So okay. yeah. We'll talk. But yeah, next week, I hope people come if you want to hear me read about a millennial who never finishes her projects. And, you know, she's always um, virtually with the father, like never in the same space, but always through the mediation of the iPhone texting. So, you know, it's like all the problems of contemporary culture, you know, that I'm, today's I'm looking Today's generation, through. of today's generation. Yeah, like... Yeah. The yeah. millennial mindset, you know, of clicking, swiping. That will, good, that will be good for us who don't have children, have no clue. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll give no, you a, a, like a close up of, of what that's like. So, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, David. Peter, thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Nice to see yeah. you again. Bye bye. I love your books, all of you. you I love all the books. Oh, yeah. Je, je, je rád, že za Yo, 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 yo. I feel at home, like when I see books, you know, and art, Gabriella's art. Also. It's a city, 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 it's a city
It's uh, the most important thing uh, in my in my flat you now. Yeah, I, I wish I had a garden. <laughs> Cicero said all we need is a garden and a library. I think. Oh uh, well, good. I think a uh, a refrigerator with a few beers in it is not bad. <laughs> <laughs> but Gabriella, I wanted to say on a humorous note, when you were reading the scene of Petros with the flag and the whole flag scene, um, your art suddenly transformed That's into funny. like a spiritual flag. Like you know, I don't know if it was intended, but it like you know, it reads on Zoom, you know, like almost like a flag. Funny. Yeah, so I thought that, that was funny. a very, she very říká, sinister moje, job. Že moje malba, malba za mnou, že když mm -hmm. jsem četla vo, 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 vo vlajce, takže se to jako, já yes, bych yes, very it's very <laughs> yes. symbolic and uh, <laughs> that's funny. It's like the spiritual flag that we need to replace yeah, yeah. all the national, you know, crazy flags. <laughs> that's yeah. what it's meant to be. Yeah. So any questions you have on Zoom, like, feel free. I'll, I'll, I found the advanced feature if you want to co-host on, on the well, unlimited. I would, I would like to host it, but I would like to keep hosting it. Host it? Uh, no. But I'm saying if you want to upgrade, you can. I know that was your concern. That yeah. You, yeah. you want to send me the link? You want to send me the link? I don't have a link. I could show you literally right now. I could show you like um, I'll share the screen. Let's do that. Let's do that. But if you want to stay, it's just something technical. What with the Zoom, I want to learn how to do. You know, I know I can upgrade for the fifteen dollars. No, but that was that was not necessary. Okay. 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 Okay.